This is Cultic. Uh, it's one of several games that uh, co-workers recommended to me as a good game to play around Halloween times. Uh, so this is an old school shooter. Uh, it's kind of heavily inspired by other similar games like Blood Fresh Supply uh, and going all the way back to say Quake and Doom. In fact, it's look at, it feels like it's actually somewhere between Quake and Doom in terms of just the way the levels are constructed and sort of the, the generation of technology that it's pretending to use, um, and it's, which is great. That was when my sort of um, earliest taste in shooters formed, so uh, I like it. Another reason I was interested in trying out Cultic is because I watched a video on Rock Paper Shotgun, which, by the way, favorite gaming website. If you haven't checked out Rock Paper Shotgun, definitely go there. Um, Rock Paper Shotgun, they, they really focus on PC games and they do a really good job of sort of highlighting uh, indie games you might normally have never heard of and sort of calling attention to what's great. Uh, that video was all about how the headshots in this game are amazing. And that was actually one of my favorite things about Destiny. Destiny had really, really good headshots. So maybe we could talk about sort of the quality of feedback and things like that. Uh, I've got uh, Renneth Cord, La Coalition, and Bardic Angel in my chat with me, so thank you all for showing up. Let's get into this game. Uh, I'll play on standard difficulty for now. 3D Realms presents A Game by Jason Smith Abduction, Double Homicide this guy's face is crossed off, missing since 1963. Spree of violence, surge of crimes. Still missing. Oh, cross that guy out. He's missing too. Allegations of misconduct spark in Ah! An investigator was removed from the case. Oh, there's his badge. Still got his badge and his gun. Oh. But he's all going all Charlie Day on this situation. He's going to New Glen Glen Duel. <laughs> it is Car. Grand Granduel. Grand Duel. Grand Duel. We're going to Grand Duel. Like Coalition likes the cool soundtrack. Does he like this axe? There's an axe. I was kind of in the way of the axe. I feel guilty now. I think my head maybe belongs up here. I'm not sure where the HUD is. Traditionally, like, Doom had HUD at the bottom of the screen. So I'll hang out up here until something tells me otherwise. Press Enter to begin. Let me see if pressing a different button will work. Yes, clicking also works. My hands! I'm... Ew! I am in an open grave filled with bodies. Check out the weird gradients that they're using for shadows. Actually, I don't know how well that comes across. Like, uh, the quality of your stream oh and now i've got a hatchet so you hold tab to open my weapon wheel there we go or i can hit f to swap to a previous weapon which is my nothing okay i've got a hatchet here we go down a path there is a light oh oh are we gonna learn to crouch go oh holding C when you land from a long fall ooh I like that kind of thing okay so when I'm running and I hail C oh yeah I can slide alright that requires some like hand contortion oh I, I have a very tall jump look at me and my tall jump I remember one of the first things I noticed about Quake was how short the jump was like it felt really weird not to be able to jump like it was strange because, like, you know, the, the previous shooter that I spent a lot of time with was Doom, where there was no jump at all. But, like, I would look at something in Quake and be like, oh, I could totally get up on that. And then I would be like, jump, and I would not be able to do it. So it's actually kind of nice that they've given me a more bouncy jump here. Oh, so I'm assuming this is a nice person. Hello, sir. Uh, I'd like to check into your beautiful hotel. Sir? Sir? The service here is terrible. Ugh. Take that. Okay, so he's dropped a health consumable that I don't need. Ooh, ooh, check it out. So the other day, um, I was at a like a, a, a meeting with uh, Calliope and her teacher. And uh, Calliope was talking about just 
video games in general. I think the, the teacher just wanted to, you know, get her talking about stuff she was interested in and just sort of get to know her a little bit more. And uh, she started talking about how she got freaked out by the sprites in Tinykin because they're always facing the camera. They don't have any back sprites, is what she called them. Um, and the teacher, we had to explain to the teacher what a sprite was in a 3D game. And it was very interesting and complicated because the teacher had no grounding in this. But if you don't have any grounding in it, this is what a sprite is in a 3D video game. It's a 2D piece of art that's made to look like it's just a normal object sitting in the world, but actually it's a 2D thing that's just always turning to face you. This process is called billboarding. It's called billboarding because, you know, they always set up billboards on the highway to be facing whatever direction will, will mean that the driver is seeing it. They're sort of tilted slightly so that they're, they're, they're sort of always at the perfect viewing angle for a driver going by. This is called billboarding rotating a sprite so that it always is facing you and even though you know getting close to it and rotating around it makes it obviously fake just from far away that just looks like a dead body lying on the ground and so it's it's good enough especially in an earlier era oh this door is stuck oh, but i want to i want to get that thing whatever that is in an earlier era where you couldn't just model everything in 3d ow Oh, this guy takes more hits! Oh! Oh! Nice. Do I have multiple hatchets now? I might have multiple hatchets. What does that mean? Can I can I throw them? Um, I bet I don't want to walk my head right into that. Some parts of the environment can be destroyed. Take that. Ooh. Dynamite. Nice. Okay. Oh, oh, ah, whoa, sorry. I I started reading the chat and I navigated poorly. So now I'm taking damage. Awesome. Um, La Coalition wants to know, is this an old school game or is it just trying to look old school? Uh, this is a game that is just trying to look old school. Ooh, yeah, I picked up some armor plate. Nice. Um, this is a modern game. In fact, I think only one chapter of it has been released. I think that it's still in ongoing development. So, oh, this guy, oh, he's shooting things at me. What? Don't do that. That's not fair. Okay, so they say to keep an eye out for secrets. So check this out. I saw this when I played the demo. It feels like I should be able to get up to that thing. But there's no ledges on the side. And if I run and jump, there's no double jump. If I run and jump, I can't get up onto that ledge. So I don't know. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can I get on the door? <gasps> I never thought of that before. Can I get on the door? Oh, oh. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. <gasps> I can get on the door! <gasps> oh, yes! This is what I was missing when I played the demo! Oh, nice. Okay, here we go. We are in here. But yeah, you can definitely... I mean, I think things like the weird gradient shadows, like the, the live shadows that are being cast and stuff like that, they're using this weird gradient. Like, you see this little bouncy shadow right there. I don't know exactly what that is. But, um... Using a gradient makes it look old school, but actually, I think that that kind of being able to sort of have things cast shadows live in the environment is actually something that would have been very difficult a long time ago. Uh, Real-time shadows was technology that was developed after Doom and Quake. You could characters would sometimes have shadows by like projecting a uh, just a simple sprite of a dark smudge below their feet, uh, and that would be about it. Okay, for a second I was like, wait a minute, you told me you could I could destroy crates. And you I can, so that's good. Anyone in here? Nope. Oh, typewriter. So, uh, Snowing Breeze says, this reminds uh, me of, game, uh, of a game from a few years ago where you were trapped in a cell and then it turned out everyone died. I don't remember what game you're talking about. I do play, like, whenever I see an old school shooter like this, though, I do try to play them. Um, I'm actually really looking forward to when they finally get um, Proteus out of early access, because that's one that I've been interested in, too. Okay, these guys have guns. I don't have a gun. Oh, wait, wait, I do. When did I pick up a gun? I've got a gun. Oh, what? <laughs> He's trying to open the door. Oh crap! Oh crap! Oh, okay, okay. 
Um, I think they dropped enough health consumables that I was able to actually recover from that. That didn't go that well, though. Um, at some point... Okay, there. Okay, look at this guy down here. Hey, buddy. Oh, you're coming up to see me? Oh, oh, oh. I keep missing his head. Ugh, gotta get closer to him. Check out that headshot. That fountain of blood that comes out of that guy's head. So this is what... Oh, the armory's locked. What? This is what Raw Paper for Shotgun was talking about. That basically, when you shoot a guy in the head, he doesn't just die, and you don't just get like a little red hit marker or something that says you've got a headshot. They don't just inform you about the headshot. They act out that headshot as dramatically as possible. Ooh, I can do weapon upgrades. Can I, though? Can I? Nope, I think I only have one. I have two weapon parts, and I need four. Oh, wait, ooh. Increase magazine capacity or stability. Let's go magazine capacity. Yes, I have upgraded my magazine capacity. Awesome. Um, anyway, so the thing is, so one of the first lessons that it was ever taught to me as a brand new game designer uh, was by my first um, design director, uh, John Cutter, was that basically the amount of fun that a player feels like they're having varies directly with how dramatic the feedback is for their actions. That basically, you know, something something is usually intrinsically fun based on its role in the mechanics and the systems. Like, you know, getting a headshot at its baseline, it's fun because you're defeating an enemy. And defeating an enemy is the goal of the game. And so that's part of what makes it fun and satisfying to do it. But how fancy the death animation is, how much impact it feels like your weapon has, how dramatic and uh, sort of explosive the headshot is, how much blood goes everywhere, is like a multiplier on how much fun you're having. It's like a coefficient next to the source of the fun. So the source of the fun is something deeper and more mechanical in, the, in sort of the reward structure of the game and the purpose of the game. But whether you feel like you're having fun is multiplied by how dramatic the feedback is. And that's really important because it's very easy to design a game where you're like, conceptually, this game is fun. Theoretically, the so problems that I'm solving are interesting and neat and require skill. And it's, and it's a relief when I succeed and, and all of this stuff. Like that, that can all be good. But if you don't have the, the right sort of amount of impact for the choices that the player is making and for the actions the player is taking, all of that can feel like it's subsumed deep in sort of the cerebral space of the game. And you don't feel it emotionally. Field journal number one. I am Christopher Holloway. I'm a private investigator looking into the disappearance of Caitlin Sullivan at the request of her parents. This is my personal journal. If you find this, something has likely happened to me. Deliver these notes to the authorities. Caitlin's folks think she's run off. Mr. Sullivan had been suspicious of the closed door gatherings taking place at the community center. In his words, it had to be Satanists. He swears that he hears chanting coming from the meeting room uh, if he's ever in the building late at night. It's a long shot, but the timing does fit. I'm going to see if I can get an invite to one of these meetings. Well, it's it's usually good to be skeptical when people say something is Satanists, so it looks like in this particular case, it might be Satanists. So yeah, Lacoalysium says, that is one of the things I love from State of Decay and don't really appreciate it from DayZ. Uh, State of Decay zombies give direct feedback when you shoot them. Uh, you can mangle them a lot, but on DayZ, they just have zero physical change, no dismemberment, no blood, nothing. And so, yeah, so some people think that, you know, blood is just gross, and if you want to put, you know, blood bleeding and dismemberment and stuff in a game, that means that you have some weird prurient interest in seeing that kind of thing. And that's not really the case. Like, like a lot of the reason you do blood and jibs and dismemberment and stuff like that is to sort of raise the quality of the feedback that the player's experiencing uh, for their actions. And in the case of violence, that means a little bit of gore. But there's gore and then there's gore. Uh, one of my favorite examples uh, from very, you know, from early in my experience of video games, one of the first times I ever really started thinking critically about video games was when I downloaded uh, around the same era two sort of spiritual sequels uh, to um, to Wolfenstein. So Wolfenstein was kind of the first proper modern 3D shooter. Um, there's arguments you can make about games like, say, Ultima Underworld competing with it and stuff like that, but uh, Wolfenstein was special. Um, and after Wolfenstein... Um, there were, there were two companies involved in Wolfenstein. One was Apogee, 
uh, which uh, eventually became renamed 3D Realms. In fact, the publisher of this game is 3D Realms. Um, so the people who made this game, oh, uh, not made, who funded and, and distributed this game. Ooh, I just got a, I just got a shotgun. I'll worry about that in a minute. Um, uh, they were the publisher. And then uh, the developer was in software uh, who went on to make Doom. And so Doom... And, oh, meanwhile, sorry, the, the publisher went and they published a different game uh, that happened in, in the wake of Wolfenstein that people don't talk about anymore. It was called Blake Stone Aliens of Gold. Um, and it was about uh, sort of a, a Buck Rogers type character. I don't know what those slowdowns mean. Um, it was a Buck Rogers type character fighting aliens. The aliens wanted gold because, you know, that's what all aliens want. They're like ninjas that way. Um, oh, gosh. There's another guy then. Oh, I'm out of bullets. Okay. Well, I've got a shotgun. I don't know how useful that's going to be at this range. I might have to just get close to him. There we go. Anyway, so they made Blakestone Aliens of Gold. And the main, you know, Blakestone was more of a, it, it's, its levels were built like Wolfenstein. They were like, you know, all uh, right angle corridors and things like that. It was much more of a Wolfenstein follow on, whereas Doom, you know, it kind of advanced the, the sort of the, the type of 3D environment you could have, that kind of thing. Doom was pushing the envelope in different ways because it was in software. That was what in software did was, you know, push the technological envelope. Oh, look, I set the guy on fire. Oh, that's great. Um... But it wasn't just a technological envelope that Doom was pushing. One of the things that was best about Doom was the fact that when you hit an imp with a shotgun, they would fly back and, you know, and, and sort of land on the ground some distance away. You really felt the impact of the shotgun, the kinetic power of that shotgun. Um, and similarly, if you shot a, um, a pinky demon in the head with a shotgun, it would... A chunk of its skull would fly away, would fly out from the body. And you get the sense of just movement coming from the body parts of these characters. Um, and uh, w meanwhile, in Blake Stone, um, there were even gorier death animations of Blake Stone, but none of them had that same kind of kinetic impact. They weren't, you know, the, the blood wasn't flying into the air. The characters weren't, you know, sort of like moving away from you. I would like this guy to get closer to me. Unless, wait, do I... Yeah, I still don't have any bullets in my gun, so... There we go. Oh, there's another one. Whew! All right, all right. Um, anyway, so they have these really, really gory death animations. Can I... Ooh, I can pick this up. Hmm. Nice! They have these really gory death animations, but all of them were static. The character would stand still and his arm would fall off. Like, you would kill him, you would just whittle down his health points. There would be no feedback, really, uh, not very much feedback for those individual hits. And then after you just hit an arbitrary threshold, suddenly his arm would fall off sideways. Which had no relationship to the actual thing you had done to his body. You had, you know, you, you had not actually, like, sawn his arm off or anything like that. Uh, you had just shot him one more time and then his arm fell off. And, or like there's an alien who like sort of like got big suddenly got a bunch of holes in his body and dissolved into goo and i was like you know if it had done this that character that dissolved into goo would splatter backwards into goo and goo would go in every direction or if you know, that guy with his arm coming off you would see his arm fly backwards off his body as though you had just shot it with your gun and i realized that it was the motion of the character that delivered that sense of um really powerful feedback it wasn't just the gore. And so I realized that there's like a difference between gore just to be yucky and gore that actually is, is doing its job in a game of like of like enhancing the feedback of the experience. So I gotta throw this before the guy shoots at me. All right, I didn't, I hit the wrong button. Dang it. I should have hit the right mouse button. Crap, this is going to go badly for me. The right mouse button lets you throw... Oh, crap. Okay, the right mouse button lets you throw things really hard, and the left mouse button just throws them a little bit. And I threw that a little bit. I meant to throw it hard, 
So it would land amidst the people over by the campfire. But that didn't happen because I hit the wrong button. But that's on me. Anyway, so this game, part of what's making it good is not that it's just like fountains of blood and fountains of blood are great. It's that the blood is shooting upwards and, and it's hitting it after you get a headshot specifically. And it's the head that's exploding. So it's like you aim your gun at the head you take a shot at the head and the head explodes. Like you feel like I did that, you know? It really, it connects the motion of the character, you know, the, the, the bits of them flying off. It connects that directly to the action that you took. Okay, so we do have some bullets now in the handgun. Oh, so, uh, Jedi Psytrick says, well, is there a way to do that, get all of the positive feedback without it being as gory without it being blood i mean uh, absolutely you totally could like especially like because these are human bodies and you kind of know what you expect from human bodies it's hard to sell it quite as strongly without a, like, a little hand and a oh um oh actually this reminds me of something there's this, i noticed this most hilarious set dressing in vigor um i should try to find it on camera someday where it's called camping disaster i think it's in uh uh what? These are all Norwegian names. I can't remember. It's it's the thing with the big factory in the middle in the seacoast. Anyway, uh, not seacoast, but like a river. Uh, anyway, one of the maps has got this thing called Camping Disaster, and it's a tree that has fallen across someone and killed them, except they're in a body bag under a tree. So someone zipped them into a body bag, but kept them under the tree that killed them. It's so bizarre. Uh, so that kind of reminded me of that. Anyway, but yeah, so like, for instance, in Destiny, you're fighting non-human characters. Um, and they don't bleed like normal humans. Um, oh no! That didn't go well. Um, it's like some of them, for instance, gout oil from, from their headshots uh, is, is, is one thing. There you go, you can be on fire. Oh, oh, oh gosh! Okay, I needed to set them on fire because I don't think I really have the ammo to get into just a giant firefight with these folks. I think that guy is so far up. Oh, wait. Oh, I, can I even go in the water? I don't even know if I can go in the water. I'm going to solve this water problem after I'm not under fire. But yeah, so it doesn't actually, it doesn't have to be blood. And so that's actually something, you know, if you want to do a game that's got like cartoony characters who don't bleed the way you expect, like, you know, realistic characters, or in this case, not real realistic characters, but human characters in a horror game, you know, you expect them to have blood. You could totally, you know, ju just knocking characters around. Even if you never penetrate their skin and you never have any kind of gore of whatever type coming out of them, you can totally get just as good feedback by just knocking them about. Um, so yeah, you're absolutely right. And so yeah, so in this game, because it's a horror game and you know, State of Decay, because it's kind of a horrific game that is meant to sort of, uh, you know, reflect the, the, the zombie genre, which is full of blood and guts. Oh, I totally can throw these. Ah, just like them. Beautiful. Um, oh, wait. Oh, I can throw this lantern, too. I think that might have set that guy on fire. I'm not sure. Oh, crap. Sorry, killing things by throwing hatchets is just... It's less effective, but it's just better. I don't think, okay, but I think this thing follows a ballistic trajectory. Oh, I've got Molotovs, what? Oh, wait. Okay, I didn't do that right. I need to figure out how Molotovs work. Okay, whatever. I'm coming for ya! There you go. There we go. I get. I don't know what that slowdown means. Does it mean I killed the last guy? Because I feel like it. Sometimes it feels like it means I killed the last guy. But no, wasn't the last guy. That guy's still there. How many shots does this dude take? Crap. 
I'm dead. Well, we had to see what death looks like anyway, right? Jedi Cetric says, did you actually need to load the, uh, do you actually need to uh, like that Molotov first? I might have had to. I think I might have needed to hold down the button in order to actually take the time to do it right. So I think that was part of my bad move. There were lots of bad moves that I made there. Oh no, oh no, we're on fire. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay, oh, oh, I have all the health I need already, so I don't need to do that. All right, so this guy. Oh right, there was a guy over here too, wasn't there? Hello, sir. Okay, not doing the best so far. This guy all the way down there. Those are these guys. Does that explode? Doesn't look like it does. Oh, am I all out of? Ah, I'm all out of bullets. Um, oh, I'm all out of this too. Okay, hold on. Okay, okay. Um, I think I prefer the lever action shotgun. Oh, it's got. Oh, it's a different gauge from the other shotgun. Oh, okay. So the two shotguns actually have different ammo. I assume they would use the same ammo. I'm doing badly. Why did I do it that way? That was a not the way to go. Oh, stop it. Okay, how do I... That guy's just up there, isn't he? I don't want to... I don't want to go where he is. Oh, there's somebody in there, too. Oh, there we go. There. There. Okay, okay. I think we got him. Oh, uh, this double barrel shotgun. I mean, it's neat and all, but... Not very accurate. I can get real close to these guys. At least let's pick up some stuff. And then let's take... I should probably take stock of, like, what I'm carrying right now. So I've got... Okay, I've got ten hatchets. I've got my shotgun with 14 shells. I've got a bunch of TNT and Molotovs. And that's kind of it. So I guess I'll stick to this shotgun for now. Oh, Snowy Breeze says lever action is a rifle. You know what? I've been assuming it was a shotgun. You're absolutely right. I'm betting it's a rifle. I'm betting that's the major reason why it wasn't doing what I expected it to do. Oh, you. Up there. Okay, fine. Okay, let's go. Let's go hatch it. But shoot me again. Hey. Okay, I missed. Gonna aim high. Still not high enough. Too high. Okay, this is just not working. Okay, that was good anyway. Oh, there's, wait, there's a root up. Oh, crap. Who's shooting at me? Oh, gosh. We just never run out of these dudes. Cults, am I right? Oh, hello. Yeah! Be on fire! Oh, wait, there's another one? How many of you are on... Ah, oh, I just came from there. Were you all down there with me before? All right, all right. My health is not great. But, okay, good. We got some pickups. Any more health pickups? Yes, down here. You had a hatchet. What else have we got? What else is around here? Hmm. There we go. 
Oh, good. My pistol now has ammo. Not a lot of ammo, but at least some ammo. That's not what I meant to hit. Reload is what I meant to hit, not F to switch weapons. So, JG Lives wants to know, if there was a manual for this game, would I have read it before playing? Um, so, I know, I, I remember, like, early on in my um, career, I remember hearing other game developers complain about players never reading manuals. Um, and there was sort of this split between people who felt like, dang it, we provided you with a manual, read the stupid manual, and then play the game. And then there was another uh, sort of contingent of people whose attitude was... Um, it's our job to make sure the player can figure out the game, and if they don't read the manual, if, if we know they're not going to read the manual, we should just lean into that and let the game teach itself. And that was the team that kind of won. Uh, you know, I think that the, the general consensus now... Oh, gosh! Is that it is... Oh! Ah! Uh, is that it's the job of the developer... Okay, we're doing this. It's the job of the developer to provide a means inside the game of the game teaching teaching how to play it. Um, and so that's how games work these days. But for a long time, games would not explain themselves. You would have to read the manual. Um, for me as a player, though, like as soon as that was not the assumption, I actually much preferred to learn to learn by doing in games. Um, just sort of trying to memorize how something works. Like having a having the manual as a reference was often really nice. Like, like, if I forgot something, having a place to look to get the answers was really good. And, like, that's that's one thing that could be a problem in games that have an internal tutorial, is that, you know, if you play through the tutorial and then you get distracted and get away from the game for a little while, um, coming back and trying to remember how the heck to play the game without a manual to refer to can be really tough. Um, and so some games really work hard to try to put a ma the, effectively a manual inside the game so you can find it. What I actually during that transition period though, when games still had manuals, but developers were not expecting you to read them, um, the thing I would do with the manual was, you know, we digital purchases of games were not really a widespread thing at that point. Like say when the original Halo came out, when Halo came out, I bought the game, um, or maybe it was Halo Two. Well, yeah, it was Halo. Uh, when Halo came out, I bought the game, and I looked at the uh, manual. But the manual was for like you know, I, I went out to GameStop picked up a copy of the game, then went to lunch. And then while I was at lunch, I was reading the manual. And it was really, what it was, was kind of an appetizer. It was like, ooh, I'm about to play this game and I'm going to like immerse myself in the mood of this world and find out, you know, the, the lore and the characters and get, to, get some kind of grounding in it that was just fun before the game started. I didn't have to read the manual to enjoy Halo. Halo had a really good internal tutorial. But am I back where I started in a mass grave? Oh no. Yes! Okay, this feels circular. <laughs> um, but but yeah, and so so that was what it was for. It's really it's for getting into the mood uh, to, to to play the game. Much you know less than actually learning how the game was played. Um, okay, part of me is like, can I get out? Do I really have to jump in this hole that looks exactly like the hole I started in? Fine. Okay, it's not the same hole. It's a different hole. If you find yourself in the dark, you can equip your lighter with tea. However, this will restrict your usage of two-handed weapons. Okay, so the sawed-off is still usable, but I couldn't have done this with the rifle. There are so many gross dead bodies. These walls kind of remind me of some of the uh, hell textures in Doom. Uh, gross... They look like they're twisting in the breeze, just... Oh, wait. Oh, weird. This sprite actually has different forms, depending on which angle I'm viewing it at, but it feels like they're rotating them in the reverse direction. So it's like, it looks like it's twisting in the wind. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Can I open this? I need a key. All right. I still never got into that armory, by the way. I just was way back there, way back at the beginning, there was an armory. I never got into it. Um. Ew! That was a 
sounds gross. T for lighter. Oh, oh! This is why we're glad we have the lighter. I'm trying to see if I can... There we go. Yes, we can set off the traps with barrels. Okay, at first I thought that maybe I could only see the barrels, with, oh, see the traps with the lighter, but it looks like actually they made it not necessary, which is kind of nice of them, actually. All right, let's see. Any more bear traps? I don't want to be playing with bear traps the entire game. There we go, we got a key now. And what is this? Scrawl note, 40 barrels today, 50 tomorrow. Do good job. More friends? What? I heard a noise. What was that noise? What the heck? Are these dangerous? Um. Uh. Oh, they do hurt me. Oh, and I can't actually fire this shotgun with one hand. I do have to support it. Okay, um, let's go hatch it for a bit. Oh, crap! Oh, shoot! Okay, I can't let that guy get anywhere near me. Okay. Okay. Wait, how far back have I gone? Oh, I've got all the way back here. All right. Well, now I know I actually want the hatchet. And now I also know not to trigger all those traps. So notice, by the way, check out what they're doing here. I can't progress this level until I remind myself how to pick up barrels. And then picking up barrels is how you defeat the traps. Now, I'm going to consciously leave the traps up, except for the one that's in my way. I'm going to pick up the key, read the note. And then... Try to murder these guys. Crap. All right. Get them out of my way. Oh, shoot. Okay, having that guy in here with me is going to be a problem. Okay. So, no. Hanging out in that room. Not a good plan, actually. Um, I wonder, can I manually save? I'd like to manually save right before I pick up that key. I think I think you can. Yeah, there's a save button. Okay. Well, I'm kind of glad I didn't manually save that time because I think I still have this gut sense that those. Um... Oh wait a minute. Can I simplify this? Nope. Okay. So maybe, do you think maybe throwing barrels at the guy is gonna be a thing? That door was barricaded shut, okay. So I wanna get out of this room as soon as I can. Which maybe means I do want the shotgun. Okay, let's save. Because these guys just get in my way real fast. Okay. Can I efficiently use this to take up multiples of them at the same time? Okay, I'm done with that. 
Oh crap! Get away. Oh, are these guys exploding? What? What is happening? Oh, is he throwing stuff? He's- Oh, 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 I'm trapped now in the- Oh, I was not paying attention to the freaking- I wasn't paying attention to the freaking traps on the ground. Okay, it looks like the traps were not useful. But I have got a bunch of explosives. Maybe that's what I should be using. Oh, he's just throwing traps. That's what he's throwing. Okay, seriously, dude, get away from me. Oh, crap. I don't know how to get away from him. Okay, 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 okay. Ah, ah, ah! Alright. Oh, I'm in a freaking trap! How do I get out of the freaking trap? Is there anything I can do to get out of the trap? Oh! Lighting is a separate action! Jedi! Right... Right to light, left to throw. Is he in here? Oh, I thought he was in here. Oh, he is! He's dead! Why is he dead? The field kit can be used to replenish any health at any time? I just hold H. Okay. And the middle mouse button is cluster toss? Okay, so it, I, I just realized it says on the left side of the screen. I wasn't paying attention. It says on the left side of the screen what I need to do to use this weapon. Okay. Oh, right. So these, so these guys were. I thought he was throwing bombs, but no. He was throwing traps. These guys were the bombs. That is what. So, part of what's kind of fun about this game is its. I'm saving. Is its old school weird aesthetic, but. It was kind of difficult for me to follow what was even happening in that fight. Ooh. Wow, I'm in the water now. That was not what I meant to do. How do I get out of the water? Am I stuck in the water forever? Um, it feels like I might be stuck in the water forever. I'm trying to jump. That's not helping. I can dive. Oh, I can wait, I can dive and then jump out of the water? I have to dive first before I can jump out of the water. How weird. And also, what were the chances of me never realizing that ever and having to reload my game because I stepped in the water? Pretty high, actually. So yeah, you are correct. This is a rifle. This is not a shotgun. Alright, here we go. Swimming up a waterfall, like you do. Um, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> oh, crap. Whew, whew. Okay, I just, I feel like I haven't caught my breath yet. Hold on. Um, So, Snowing Breeze was like, how are these guys hurting you? They're talking about the, the bound guys. Their entire body is bound. Well, they're hitting me with their face. And then, of course, they're exploding. That's also having something to do with it. Wait, I've been here. There's dead bodies on the ground. Also, my phone is buzzing. Let me make sure that's not something important. Let's see here. Hmm. Oh! Let's see here. Oh, my wife is asking me if I can pick my son up. I think I probably can. We need to wrap this up pretty soon anyway, so let me... I'll get back to her in just a second. Let's just see... 
Okay, I honestly don't even know what direction I'm going. We've got a key. Oh, was there a door in here? Or this, I jumped down this. This is how I ended up where I was. Is there a door to, uh, is there a different place I can go? Yes. There we go. This is our destination. But I'm almost out of time and I do need to go uh, arrange stuff with my family. So let's wrap it up here. But uh, I like this game. This game, I mean, you know, here and there, there have been like frustrating bits or bits that were a little bit hard to figure out. But once I did figure them out, I mean, all the questions had reasonable answers. And in the meantime, they've just done a really good job of nailing this old school aesthetic and, and definitely sort of making... The, the, the feedback in the game make every action that I take feel really crunchy and cool. So uh, I'm enjoying this. I'm probably going to continue playing it. Um, so happy Halloween. <laughs> um, here's a subscribe button. Uh, I think throughout October, I'm going to try to play more kind of scary, creepy games like this. And so enjoy links to other games. And yeah, I'll see you all later.